Now it's time that I show you my absolute favorite turtle that I own. What's going on Swamp Squad? We're back with another video. This is Swamp Live Reptiles and we have an exciting video for you today. Today, we're gonna take a tour around my facility, AKA my house, all while doing a water change. I hope you tune in and I hope you enjoy. So we're gonna start off with how I do my water changes and then I'll do some tours all while doing this, all right? So I have this quarter horsepower sump pump. I pretty much use this to drain the water. It makes it very efficient, very quick. It helps me get the job done. While I do that, I have a hose running out and then I have a water hose hooked up running in that will fill it simultaneously. All right, See here I have the pump hooked in. This small 10 gallon tank serves as a uh, recovery tank, a hospital tank for me. So I got the water running out. And so let's go ahead and turn on the water so we can refill this tank. All right, so while that's still draining, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the uh, beautiful turtle that was um, in that tank for right now. So she hasn't always been and she won't always be, but um, she's been in there because she had some skin fungus. And so I needed to keep her separate as well as provide certain things to her. This is Missy. She is a Mississippi Diamondback Terrapin. They're found from the Panhandle of Florida in and around the Gulf Coast into Louisiana and Texas, okay? She's a beautiful female, as you can see, and the skin fungus is all but pretty much gone, okay? I acquired her pretty recently. Um, her shell's kind of hammered. You can't really see it. There we go. Okay, some pyramiding and stuff, but she is one of my most personable turtles and one of my favorites. Not my favorite, but she is definitely my wife's favorite. Say, hey, Missy. Beautiful. I really love the cow spots on the Mississippis, or on some of the Mississippi Diamondback Terrapins you can see. I'm hoping one day she'll produce some beautiful hatchlings for me. All right, I've drained as much of the water as I want to drain. And now it's time to go ahead and fill the tank back up. After I do that, I'm going to scoop out this stuff that's in the bottom of the tank. She probably has about a week or two left in here. I run a simple sponge filter and then I use um, pool filter salt on my terrapins that are in brackish setup. I have another video all about brackish versus fresh water because I do keep some terrapins in fresh and some in brackish. All right, I'll finish this and then we'll put Missy back in. All right, I got Missy. I have scooped out her uh, the poop and stuff that was in the water after I did the water change. I added a cup of salt over here, pool filter rock salt, and now it's time to add Missy back into her enclosure. All right, Swamp Squad. Now we're gonna go ahead and look at another one of my species that I work with, the North American Spotted Turtle. This species of turtle is an amazing species to work with. They stay small. They're absolutely gorgeous, as you can see. Those yellow spots on a black shell, okay? You cannot ask for a more beautiful turtle. So this is my setup on my North American Spotted Turtles, okay? It is a Zoomed 50 gallon low boy aquarium. As you can see, I keep them in shallow water with a canister filter, a beautiful piece of driftwood. They have rocks, okay? Interesting enough, oh, and of course, live plants. 
Interesting enough, I don't do full water changes on their tank. I only add water through evaporation, or after evaporation rather. So this tank is pretty easy to clean. The live plants definitely help keep the water clean. And as you can see, there's another one. All right, so let's go ahead and add water to their setup. As you can see here, this is a mercury vapor bulb. Both UVB and heat, they're the only bulbs that I would recommend with turtles. There's no sense in having two bulbs when technology has gotten to the point where we can have a two-in-one bulb. The only thing is you have to update them every three months or replace them every three months, which isn't a terrible problem. But look at how these species interact. Even though my enclosure is not an outdoor natural enclosure, these species still interact with this tank in a beautiful way that I get to witness day in and day out. Something a lot of people don't know about the North American spotted turtle is they're not the greatest swimmers in the world, okay? I have four here. I haven't named them. It's been rather difficult to tell them apart for most of their um, smaller stage, and they're still only yearlings. These are only year old animals, but this is one of them. Uh, I believe I have a 1.3 group. That was a female. This is another female, absolutely beautiful shells. It's interesting enough, my spotted turtles um, almost drowned and I caught them uh, when I transitioned them to a stock tank temporarily. Uh, they were on their backs on the bottom of the tank and I guess they had almost drowned. Thankfully, I was able to use the method that I use for um, um, drowned turtles or, or turtles that have gotten water in them and uh, I've been pretty successful. It's another female, as you can see her tail. Now let's get this lone ranger of a male. Um, I believe this is a male, so don't quote me if I'm wrong. I'm by no means an expert on uh, determining the sex of spotted turtles, but he has a huge tail in comparison to his female counterparts. This is the lone male. Now it's time that I show you my absolute favorite turtle that I own, okay? This is one that I'm very proud of and it took me a lot of work to get. Not only just saving, but um, there was a point in which she was sick and I thought I was gonna lose her and I was able to bring her back um, into health. And so this is by far my favorite terrapin. So let's see if I can go ahead and find her for you guys. She's usually always hidden underneath the plant. There she is. Oh. This is Mango. She is my mangrove diamondback terrapin. She is the queen of swamp life reptiles in terms of the turtles. Absolutely gorgeous. You can kind of see her crush plate. I need to get some more crush curl, coral rather, for her enclosure. She's a mean son of a gun, but she's absolutely beautiful. Um, from what I was told, she's a Northern Keys locale mangrove. So she doesn't have the gray concentric look to her. But as you can see, she is beautiful. Say hey to the people. Say hey, Swamp Squad. You can see I've started the water change for Mango's tank. I'm gonna go over here, turn on my water. Whoa, look at the size of that wasp. I did mow the grass today, so the mower's still out. Look at the flow of that bad boy. Insane, right? All right, let's get back over here. Pretty simple. One's draining, one's filling. All right, I'll get back to you in a minute because this does take two hands, guys. All right, guys, so I'm still doing the water change here, but um, yeah, I electrocuted myself. Uh, my hand was tingling. It was the craziest feeling I've ever felt. Um, so you guys be careful when you're dealing with water and electricity. Mango, um, she was sitting in a sand pit, but it's okay because I like sand in the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and return her. She instantly disappears. There.
Cool. Yeah, I use these metal grates to put over the top to make sure she doesn't get out. And it's worked marvelously. All right, Swamp Squad, let's see what else we got in store for you guys. We're in my backyard. This is where I keep the majority of my setups. Some of my favorite uh, turtles actually live back here. I'm not gonna say my favorite. I, I guess they're all my favorite, I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, so let's go ahead and see what we got going on back here. Right here is the enclosure that I have for my Florida box turtles. You can kind of see him right there. There's one of them. Uh, the majority of them, two out of the three, like to spend most of their time in the water. I have this set up, um, zip tied the lid. So I'm not gonna take these guys out. They're on my Instagram all the time. This is Speedy, Groot, and Bugs, my three Florida box turtle yearlings. Guys, make sure you know your laws, your state laws. Make sure you have your proper, your proper permit, sorry. Um, a lot of people ask about my Diamondback Terrapins because I do have a number of them. Um, but I have a number of people that live with me and so it's two per person per household. Um, so just make sure you know uh, what you're legally allowed to have um, as well as the proper permits, all right? Now I'm gonna show you my outdoor freshwater pond that I keep uh, for Diamondback Terrapins. So right here, right next to my Florida box turtle enclosure is my naturalistic stock tank pond. I say naturalistic because there is an actual tree stump. This is a tree stump with roots at the bottom, okay? As well as a large piece of driftwood that they like to bask on. I have all of this water lettuce on top that they like to hide around, as well as fish inside. It's really marvelous to see when it rains, how they interact with their enclosure. All right, so yeah, this is Domino. He is a male concentric diamondback terrapin. Uh, as you can see, he has a heart on his cheek. He's a great guy, beautiful shell. And as you can see from his tail, he is a male. Diamondback terrapins um, are part of that family of turtles of the dimorphism. The males look extremely different from the females. So when people reach out to me and ask me to sex their diamondback terrapin, I look at two things, the head shape, the head of the males is extremely skinny, even as hatchlings. And then I look at the tail length and where the cloaca is located. This is my male concentric. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and dive into the pond, figuratively, not literally, and get Meg, my female concentric. All right, guys, this is Meg, the female concentric diamondback terrapin. Shout out to Terrapin Station Exotics. I got her from them. Shout out to Brett and Jason. Go follow them on Instagram and social media. They have absolutely beautiful Diamondback Terrapins uh, in Illinois. As you can see, she is massive. Her tail is small and her head is fat. That is that dimorphism I was talking about. Hopefully next year she'll produce some baby concentrics for me. Um, I actually have a preference that I like, the concentrics with the black skin markings. The white on black is absolutely marvelous to me. Uh, many people don't care for them. She is in fresh water, as you can see. She's had her ups and downs in it, um, but overall she's doing well now. All right guys, I'm gonna have to go over there and get them. But over there are two of my ornate diamondback terrapins, my female. Bumpers and my male Bowser. I'm gonna go ahead and try to get them. Um, I also want to just point out that my hand is still tingling and numb from the electrocution. Um, it is no joke, guys. It's like super tight. If you guys know of any ways to help with this or get rid of this, please just comment on this video and let me know. All right, after hunting him down, this is Bowser. This is my oldest male, ornate diamondback terrapin. He was actually incubated to be female by a friend of mine, Aaron. Shout out to her. Uh, and I got him and he had some pretty bad shell rot on the bottom of the shell. It seems to be doing a lot better. It's been uh, maybe a year or two. I'd have to go check. He is a captive bred um 2017 hatched male so he is ready to go he's one of my more personable ornates 
always out there basking, always hungry, and I'm hoping he'll get the job done with my females. You gonna help me find bumpers? You gonna help me find bumpers? All right, let's find Guys, it. you're probably not gonna believe this, but Bowser actually did help me find bumpers. Uh, after about 30 to 45 seconds of swimming around, he swam right to her. Uh, he, sw he likes swimming around the females. This is Bumpers, my female ornate diamondback terrapin, my largest one. Call her Bumpers because she had an abscess on her head that had to be removed when she was younger. And it put a little bump on her head. As you can see, she, oh, she is a flowerback diamondback terrapin. She's absolutely beautiful. Uh, something else that I like about her is the fact that she is a hidden warrior. She likes to stay hidden. The only time I see her basking is early in the morning and late in the evening before the sun goes completely down. Other than that, she is a hider. I hope you guys like her, she is beautiful. Also got her from Terrapin Station Exotics. Sweet. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and show you uh, an underwater filming of the enclosure so you can see all about it. All right, I hope you enjoy this part of the video. It's always fun when I'm filming my turtles underwater with my phone. Hey, that video, gotta admit, was pretty awesome. I hope you enjoyed them. All right, over here are my ornate Diamondback Terrapin yearlings. Uh, I do have a two-year-old in here, but this is a 2.1 group. Two males, one female. As you can see them down there, that's Ruby, Yoda, and Casper. These guys are pretty awesome. Uh, one thing that I like about keeping my Terrapins outside is that I don't have to do water changes on them. So the water comes off the roof when it rains, comes into here, and then over here, I have an overflow. And so it naturally uh, water changes for me. And here in Florida, it rains pretty regularly. Uh, the only thing that I have to do is add salt back to it because the rain does lower uh, the salinity. So let's go ahead and see. Right, so first we have Yoda. He is a male ornate Dimeback Terrapin. I actually hatched him, shout out to me. His scutes are really weird and that's why his name is Yoda, but he is a flower back and I think he's beautiful. I mean, his head spotting is nice. He has a blue pigment. The flower back looks really good. Let's go out to the light so we can see that better. He is a male, he's a year old, he hatched last year. Um, I had sold him at one point and I had to get him back. Uh, the person wasn't taking the greatest care of him in my opinion. Um, and so I needed to get him back because I hatched him and I feel like he's my responsibility. So he'll probably be with me forever, even though I really don't need any more males. Uh, let's go ahead and see what else we got. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and show you Ruby. Ruby is a two-year-old female ornate Diamondback Terrapin. Uh, she was actually my first Diamondback Terrapin, or let me rephrase, my first ornate Diamondback Terrapin that I ever purchased. Um, she's getting nice size to her. Uh, my yearlings did start to catch up to her. Uh, I had a yearling female that I recently just uh, sold to a friend of mine in California. Shout out to you, Debbie. Um, but yeah, this is Ruby. Uh, I don't think I'll ever be able to get rid of her. Um, stop it. Stop it. 
probably my uh, second favorite ornate. This is Casper. He is a male ornate diamondback terrapin that I have a lot of plans for. He's gonna get a lot of love. I should call him McLovin. Um, I really love this matte white skin, as you can see, that he has. And I really wanna see if I can breed matte white skin ornates. I don't necessarily care about spotting, and so he's gonna be pretty much the leader of my uh, future breeding projects. Um, and I hope that I can uh, give my friends and family, um, I do have my class three permit, so I can sell them. Um, but I hope that I can uh, give my friends and family beautiful uh, ornate diamondback terrapins that are all captive bred. What do you got to say, Casper? You wanna show me your head? Yeah. Okay, Casper. Let's go ahead and look at the show. Oh, 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 oh. There we go. We have my Waterland tub. Um, this is my last outdoor enclosure. This is an interesting setup. I have three different species in here. Right now I have common stink pot musk turtles. I have two Central American wood turtles as well as one Indian spotted turtle. Um, Here we have my male Central American wood turtle. He, doesn't, he acts like he doesn't wanna drop his tail. Okay, he is the darker of the shells on my Central American wood turtles. Super personable, I will admit. And they are tong feeders, so they'll eat straight out of my hand if I let them. After hunting through water hyacinth and driftwood, here is the female Central American wood turtle. She has a lighter colored shell. See, baby tail, she has it tucked up. But she is also pretty beautiful. As you can see, I really like colorful and beautiful turtle species. Indian spotted turtle. One of the most beautiful turtles there is. I don't care who you are and you can't argue with me. This is the oldest living resident here at Swamp Live Reptiles. This is Squirt, my female common stink pot musk turtle. She is about 14 years old. Please don't musk me. Don't musk me, bro. Uh, I've had her since I was about 14. I'm now 27. Uh, and uh, she might be older. She is massive compared to my other female stink pot. So this is my other female stink pot musk turtle. As you can see, considerably smaller than her counterpart. Uh, she doesn't have a name. So if you guys want to give my other female stink pot musk turtle a name, you can comment below. Stink pot musks are real underrated species, man. They're pretty awesome. They stay small. Uh, they forge the bottom. They're really active at night, I've noticed and uh, they're easy to take care of. I mean, this, look how dark and disgusting this water is now. I mean, this is all the water hyacinth in there, so the water is not technically disgusting, but in terms of like coloration, I am gonna do a water change and I am gonna hook up a sponge filter to here since the canister filter broke. Uh, this is a medium waterland tub. So yeah guys, got one more turtle that I'm gonna show you guys here at Swamp Life Reptiles. The squirt on the move. I'm about to go show you this last turtle. All right guys, we're here with my last animal here at Swamp Life Reptiles currently. Always looking to add more. This is Pinky. She is a female ornate diamondback terrapin. I got her from Terrapin Station Exotics. Come on, Pinky, put your head out so the people can see you. Uh, the plan is to breed her with Casper one day and hopefully they'll produce some uh, amazing hatchlings. Uh, this is her shell. She was born in February, so she'd be what, six, seven months at this point. Okay, I keep her inside, inside of a 55 gallon aquarium. Um, I, have, uh, I also have mangrove plants planted into her aquarium because she's um, pretty gentle with them. She did uproot one of them, but there's still two more in there uh, that help absorb the nitrates and the nitrites in the water uh, to make sure the water quality is ideal for her. She is in a brackish tank, 
um, and she is doing great. I have her water temperature at 86 degrees. I like to have the water a lot warmer so they grow quicker so I can put them together. She's the only one I have this size, so she's by herself right now. Um, but soon she'll be with Casper, Yoda, and Ruby. Probably this winter. Grand closure. You see that we have the gray mangrove plants here. Mercury vapor bowl. Driftwood log. It is time for her to get a water change, so I'm gonna do that after this video. Um, but she absolutely loves it. Uh, we'll find her during the day foraging in the sand, uh, looking for stuff, so I need to get her some uh, shrimp and some snails and things she can Hey Swamp Squad, this has been a pretty fun video to record. Uh, this is the first time that I've actually recorded all of my animals in uh, one day. Normally I just take bits and pieces of them. Uh, they all seem to be doing great. I'm excited. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, please look for my next video, which is going to be on freshwater versus brackish water for Diamondback Terrapins. Uh, and let me know if you have any ideas and things you want to see for our next video. All right, guys, till next time. See you later. This has been Swamp Life Reptiles.